We've got all kinds of activities happening at this crime scene when I arrive. We have press there in large numbers. You have employees who are crying and terrified in the parking lot. You have tactical enforcement people there in full gear, ready to do whatever it is they have to do. Miss, can you tell me what happened? He just came out of nowhere. He started shouting at us and telling us to lie on the floor. He's going to shoot us. Then what happened? Well, we all ran. It was total chaos. We didn't know what else to do. What the f are y'all doing? Get over here right now! Paul Fister was one of the employees held at gunpoint by the armed robber. What went through my mind was that I'm not going to stand here and get shot. I decided to take off and run through the aisle. I felt a smack on my backside, and the adrenaline was flowing, so I just kept running. I was scared out of my mind. I was really terrified. I had gotten out of the end of the aisle and gotten upstairs where the offices were. What happened to you? I got shot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sit in here. I asked them to watch me so I did not go into shock. Slap me, hit me, whatever. Just do not let me fall asleep. <laughs> We've called the police. The police are on the way. While Paul escaped from the robber, other employees met a different fate. When he opens fire, one of the employees named Anthony Trujillo stands still. Get up and open the register right now. I'm out of cashier. I don't know how. Tony, unfortunately, does not have keys to the cash register. He can't open it up. He doesn't have the clearance to do it. The robber forces Tony to plead for a cashier to come help him. Hurry up! Hey, can I please get somebody up here to open the register? You got me. Nerves are really high. People are frazzled. They don't know what to do. There's no way. <laughs> I can't do anything else. What the That's all I can do! The cops are coming. Give me your wallet! He heard sirens. He knows he's close to going down for this. Ten dollars? Oh. This is all the guy had in his pocket. It's a lot oh. of trouble to go to to wind up with ten dollars, but it's not just about the money with him. It's about being in charge. It's about being the man everybody's afraid of. The money's, sure, he needs the money, but he needs the power more. Within minutes, the tactical team arrives. They think the guy might still be in the business. Stand up for me, please, and we're going to walk towards the door. They evacuate the store. They get the employees out. They get the wounded man to the hospital. They search this place thoroughly, assuming that if he did hear them coming, he may have gone somewhere in the storage areas. They do not find him. He's not in there. Hey, Lieutenant. How you doing? Did you find any evidence? Uh, not much, just one shell casing. 380? Yes, sir. It's the same brand, the same head stamp as we found in the other scene. Let's see markings before. It's definitely our guy. It's not a copycat. It's not somebody trying to act like him. It's him. Where's the employee that got robbed? I want to talk to him. He's out there with the rest of the employees. Tony, the clerk that was manhandled by our suspect, is a very good chance of becoming our best witness. He's in close contact with the suspect. He has the longest contact with this individual during the course of the robbery. Tony, you the guy that got robbed? Yes. Was this guy taller or shorter than you? A little shorter, maybe 5'5", five, five, black guy. What'd you say? Maybe he was black, African-American. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm positive. I saw his skin. How'd you see his skin? When he grabbed me, um, his glove slipped down a little, and I just saw he was black on his arm. We had no idea his race before now. We're getting closer. We know the gun. We know the caliber. We know the manufacturer. Now we know he's African-American. Inch by inch, we're learning. We don't know enough, but we're learning. Learning is good for us, bad for him. Kenda has his men search the perimeter of the store for any additional evidence the gunman may have dumped in his hurry to escape police. He knows the police are close. What do people do when they think the police are close? 
They discard evidence that might link them to the offense. They start getting rid of things they don't want to be found with if the police arrive before they can physically get out of the area. So they're looking for anything that could possibly be connected to this robber, to the stuff he wore, to the gun he shot, anything at all. Time is of the essence in a circumstance like this. And we are, at the moment, the only hope the community has to put a stop to this. We're the only hope. I know we're all tired, but we got to keep looking. It's 3.30 in the morning at this point. But there are a substantial number of policemen in uniform and in plain clothes who are going to search this area physically with flashlights. Let's see what we can find. Lieutenant, over here. About an hour in to the search, one team yells jackpot. What have you got? Looks like our guy dumped a few things. Got a gun and a ski mask. They're underneath the car that's parked on the street near the scene. Fantastic. I am now elated. After all this vague information, we have, for the first time, meaningful physical evidence. We are on a roll. It feels really good when that happens. It feels really good. 380 caliber pistol. I matched our bullet casings. This is the gun used by the suspect that we've been looking for for days. Nice. What is it? The serial number hasn't been removed. It's called ATF. ATF can trace a weapon from the day of manufacture into the hands of the last lawful owner. Shortly after returning to the station, Kenda gets a call back from the ATF. OK, I've got you on speakerphone. Uh, what do you got for us? The gun belongs to an African-American named Brian Andrews of Colorado Springs. Brian Andrews purchased this weapon from a pawn shop in Colorado Springs some time ago, and that his name is on the firearm sales transaction record. OK, thank you. You want to run for the system, see what we've got on him? Will do. I'm assuming that Brian Andrews is my guy. I don't know that he is, but he is the registered owner of the firearm used. We pull a record on Brian Andrews. Brian Andrews has several charges against him. However, no armed robberies. OK, well, maybe he's trying something new. Well, the interesting thing is he uh, just reported his gun stolen. Really? Well, my, 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 Mr. Andrews, how convenient. The gun used in the commission of an attempted murder is suddenly been stolen from you hours after this weapon was used in the commission of a crime. Brian is in this up to his neck. I know it. 